What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and it's time for week six of the Pokemon Premier League. This means we're over halfway done now, which is bizarre to think of, but also pretty awesome. Now for week six, we're coming off of a very slight loss against the Pittsburgh Pyroars. I'm sorry, not against the Pittsburgh Pyroars. I don't know what I'm thinking. I think I'm just getting ahead of myself is what's going on there because that was in week one. Anyways, I'm getting all my losses confused as we're, we're coming off of an 0-2 loss against the Baltimore Braviaries. This week we're going up against the AS Monferno, who of course are coached by Onesie Bennett. I have left his information in the description for your wonderful viewing pleasure. And uh, for this battle, I actually had a lot of fun prepping for this battle because this was my first time um, bringing Caracosta to a battle. Really, really wanted to bring it last week, but so much bad stuff happened that prevented that. Uh, but this is his time to shine. And so this time I actually have a Lumberry Scrappy Pangoro. And that was my all around lead for his team. It can one hit KO Sableye. If he burns me, the Lumberry heals it. I have a move for every single member of his team. And anything but Sableye, I'm just going to knock off anyway. Because he can't one hit KO me with anything but uh, if he has Whimsicott, which he does. Um, I also have a choice spec Chandelure, just because with Chandelure I can either one hit KO or two hit KO everything in this team. And choice specs puts on immense pressure on his team as well. Um, so I definitely wanted to have that available too. Now, uh, in addition to choice specs Chandelure, I also have a banded Caesar, And Caesar here puts on a lot of work as well, especially because he actually didn't end up bringing uh, some of his more bulky Pokemon. So basically when I take out Zapdos, that's gonna be really, really difficult for his team to deal with uh, a banded Caesar. I had this another mixed Obama Snow build, which actually I changed the EVs up on, just so I can make sure I can basically ensure some really good chances of some one hit KOs here and there uh, with Blizzard and or with um, Woodhammer. Uh, and then of course we also have access to A pretty bulky Clefable. I actually bred a brand new Clefable for this battle. I needed a Calm one, so I rebred it with Fire Blast, Moonlight, Calm Mine, and um, Moon Blast. He did have a Scavalier, so I wanted to make sure I could handle that very effectively. And of course, Fire Blast helps out against Whimsicott a little bit too, and to a lesser extent, Bayleaf. Bayleaf is so bulky without some Calm Mines, that wouldn't do the trick. Uh, but after I take out some of his really heavy hitters, such as Victini and Marowak, he really can't handle Clefable. Uh, and then Caracosta has mixed defenses, sets up Stealth Rocks, and it can very, very nicely um, tank a couple of hits here and there. I was really worried about Victini and Marowak going into this battle just because they hit so hard against my team. And so I needed something I could switch into the fire type attacks or the rock type attacks and threaten now with Aqua Jets. I actually didn't have Aqua Jet on Caracosta, I just wanted the threat of it. It's a lot more efficient for me in this matchup to go for Scald and Fish for Burns. Um, and I also had Ice Beam, just in case Zapdos tried to do any type of weird little switch ends or anything like that. Um, I was pretty pleased to not see Sock or Regirock or Umbreon on his end. All those Pokemon are bulky and pretty annoying. I can understand why he didn't bring them though, just because they do uh, for example, Sock wouldn't have really helped against the Pokemon that I brought. Regirock would have been interesting, but then it would have given him another weakness to Caesar bullet punching everything in the face, in addition to Spec Chandelure with Energy Ball. And then um, something like Umbreon, while it would have been really good clerical ability, yet another weakness to Bandit uh, Caesar. So we're just going to start off with the lead that I did plan on. And that means that we're in a pretty good matchup here. I was actually tempted to go for Ice Punch, but I figured he, if he has Thick Club, he has a good chance of one-hit KOing me. So let's get rid of that first. And that works out well because Sans here just goes for Bone Meringue, and it barely, it does right almost exactly at 50%. And that means I'm able to finish him off with an Ice Punch. I was actually surprised to see that I outsped because I put, a, I put Jolly Pangoro, but I was just expecting him to be, I don't know, some weird set where he could outspeed my Pangoro. Uh, but that worked out really, really nicely because now Marowak is down. He doesn't have Stealth Rocks up. He doesn't have any other ways of getting them up. We're in a good position. 
Now here I go out in the Chandelure hoping that he doesn't get the special attack drop. Uh, he does reveal that he's life orbed off of that moon blast hit. I was briefly worried about Shadow Ball, but after some consideration, I decided he probably didn't have room on his moveset for Shadow Ball, just for Chandelure. Uh, and so as he goes out into Victini expecting the fire type move, I just blow Victini away with a Shadow Ball. Now right here, Shadow Ball really was my best move. He had nothing on his team that could take a spec Shadow Ball. And if I went for Fire Blast, he could have gone into uh, Victini and taken that hit. Even um, And plus I don't have Fire Blast, I had Heat Wave, which means I had a chance to miss it too. So I, I just thought that Shadow Ball was my best overall neutral play right there. Now as he goes into Sable, I figure he's going to Mega Evolve and either knock off or go for Will-O-Wisp. And I figure now's a good time to get Clefable in here. If I can get it burned, that means it won't be paralyzed later by a possible Whimsicott Stun Spore or Thunder Wave from Zapdos. Uh, but this is a good opportunity to just go for Calm Mind. I actually thought he might go straight into Kyurem, expecting the Calm Mind or Thunder Wave. But he goes out into Zapdos. And I wasn't sure what to expect from Zapdos, so I just stayed in and went for Moonblast. And he goes straight for Thunderbolt, and it doesn't do that much, so it made me go, is he Scarfed? Let's see how much damage I do. And I do a little bit over half, which is perfect, until he gets this critical hit. Now, fortunately, I went for Moonlight on that turn because I really needed to see if he what he was. If he were if he wasn't Scarfed, he'd probably roost that HP to get the HP back, or he might have even switched out. So since he went for another Thunderbolt, that means I just need to keep on Moonlighting after that crit because I need to make sure I'm at good HP. Otherwise, Kurum will be able to come in and threaten me out. Whereas if I as long as I'm over 80% HP, I can take any hit from Kurum and Moonblast it back. Now here on the turn that I tried to KO Zapdos, I get paralyzed and fully parried in the same turn. And I have the Moonlight again, so now I've used three of my five Moonlights. I ran out of PP ups uh, on some of my other moves. And I didn't think I'd be using Moonlight that much in this battle. And of course Moonlight doesn't pair very well with the Bomb of Snow anyway. But I did want the recovery, and I'm not going all the way back to what? Third gen to get soft boiled on Clefable? That's a lot of playtime that I don't have time for. Uh, but I am able to take out Zapdos very nicely, and I'm at a decent amount of HP. He reveals here with the Flash Cannon that he is especially offensive, which I was so relieved to see. Um, and based on the damage, he did confirm after the battle that it was a Scarf Kyurem. If he were Specs, then it would have done a little bit more, but he still might not have KO'd me, especially with the Calm Mind. And so I'm able to do a huge amount of damage to him. I think he definitely had some bulk investment on Kyurem because he was able to live a plus one. Uh, I think I only have 36 special attack EVs on Clefable. So uh, seeing that he is probably scarfed or locked into a move there based on the damage he's doing, I go out into the Caesar, and I was hoping that a bullet punch would do a little bit more damage. Maybe he had a mixed defensive Sableye or something like that, but it doesn't do over half. So now I'm forced to switch out. I just go back into Clefable hoping for an opportunity to recover up. I didn't know if he was carrying some type of weird coverage move or hidden power to take me out from this range. But as long as I don't get paralyzed, I can get a Moonlight off here, or I can also just go for a uh, Moonblast. But of course I get paralyzed because there's that 25% chance of looming over me. And I was like, well, I might as well just stay in at this point because I don't really know what he's going to go for. And Whimsicott does get some interesting coverage options. But he actually goes for Hidden Power Fire, and that gives me an opportunity to take out Whimsicott. Uh, I was also worried that he might go for Stun Spore there, expecting the switch. And once again, I don't want to switch something in all strangely here to an attack. I was tempted to switch into Chandelure there actually as he goes for Earth Power, so I was really happy I didn't do that because um, that was a great coverage option. But uh, now, since I know he's locked into Earth Power, perfect opportunity for Caesar to come back in. And if he stays in, Earth Power won't KO, and I can KO him with U-Turn and then go back out into Pangoro. If he switches out, I can do a decent amount to Sableye, go out into Pangoro, and be able to KO it from there no matter what. Now, um, as I go into Pangoro here, it does occur to me that he might have some priority, but Pangoro resists any type of priority that he would have. So going for superpower there and getting a crit was a very uh, simple, straightforward play. The crit didn't really matter because it's a Pangoro and he only had half of, around half of his HP left. Uh, so even with max defense, that wouldn't have helped him out too much there. Here I figured that he would just be going for Draco Meteor, trying to pick up some KOs in order to swing the differential back into his favor. And so I go back on in the Caesar, and he does go for Draco Meteor, and wow, even my HP investment, which I think is only, what, 
12 points. <laughs> it doesn't help out here. And that attack does a ton of damage. You really underestimate Kirim's 130 base special attack because, man, that did a lot of damage. Uh, but that means Bullet Punch is going to be enough to finish off Kirim. And we're going to seal this battle off with a 5-0 victory. Now, um, just a couple of comments here in the end here. I really enjoyed this battle overall. I did think it, this battle really came down into preparation times because Alex was actually in the midst of a musical and some other obligations he had going on. So I don't think he got to prep as much as he really wanted to. In fact, he said that. Whereas I, we were having, I was working a lot of extra hours at work, but some of those hours were slow. So at work, I was able to work on my team, not playing the game, but I was able to think about it a lot more than I otherwise would be able to, um, as opposed to when I get home after work and I'm really, really tired. So that prep really, really ended up mattering there. Even though he managed to call a few of my sets like Scrappy uh, Pangoro or even the Specs Chandelure, he knew what I would possibly be bringing. But since he wasn't able to really uh, bring the things that he wanted to bring, it really came down to that in the end. So thank you very much, Alex, for the battle. And I did definitely enjoy picking up another victory for the Pokemon Premier League. We are not going down this season without a fight. And speaking of fights, that actually means Week seven, that's coming up after this. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna post this at some point when I'm out of town. But next up is against the FC Volcarona, and that's going to be a pretty interesting match there just between all the Mega Gardevoir. Uh, we have Rotom versus Rotom action. We also have Hippowdon, which is pretty annoying all around. And we also have Spinda. So we might have some Panda versus Panda action, which would be pretty cool. So you should look forward to that. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great weekend. All right, guys. Bye-bye now.